Hey, Star Trek fans, Dan Gunther here. Uh, just about to sit down and record a uh, breakdown of the Star Trek Picard trailer. So uh, let's not uh, waste any more time and get right to it here. So here's my review and uh, shot by shot breakdown of the Star Trek Picard trailer from the 2019 New York Comic Con. As the trailer starts out, we get some establishing shots uh, of a location that we've seen a lot of in the other trailers as well, the Picard family vineyard, where we know the action will be starting out in Star Trek Picard. As we move in on the location, we see what looks to be Commander Data doing a painting in the vineyard. Interestingly, Data is wearing his TNG-style uniform from Season's three through seven of Star Trek The Next Generation. We see Picard walking towards Data, and we see that Picard is also wearing his uniform from that era of Star Trek. There's kind of a hazy, dreamlike quality to the sequence, including a bit of a reverb on some of the voices, indicating that this is a fantasy sequence or a dream of some sort, which will be confirmed a little bit later in the trailer as well. Data asks Picard, Would you like to finish it, Captain? And we get a look at the painting that he's working on. It appears to be kind of a beach on a stormy sea, and what appears to be an unidentified woman. Now, her face isn't finished, and the painting itself is very much unfinished. This, to me, indicates this will have something to do with the main theme of the story, and of course, we do know there is a woman who will show up whose identity is kind of shrouded in mystery, and that's Dodge, played by Issa Briones, who we will see later in the trailer as well. Picard replies to Data that I don't know how to finish it, and Data says, That is not true, sir and hands him the brush, holding the brush out to him, and interspersed, cutting back and forth between the brush and uh, these other scenes that show kind of an attack on some ground installations by these unidentified ships. I'm wondering if this is also a flashback to a prior mission that they've referred to in other trailers where he led a rescue armada. These seem to be unknown alien vessels. I don't really think they look like Romulan vessels. They might be, but I think this is something new that we've never seen before, which is interesting because it's adding a new element that is different from what we've gotten in previous trailers. As Picard reaches for the brush and takes it from him, next we see Picard waking up from this apparent dream, and we get our first appearance in this trailer of his pet dog, who uh, is confirmed in this trailer to be named number one as Picard reassures him that he's all right. We get a series of clips of Picard on the vineyard and we get a voiceover from Patrick Stewart saying, I came here to find safety, but one is never safe from the past. So again, an indication that some of the decisions he's made in the past will come forward to haunt him. And we see that possibly in the form of this young woman named Dodge, who we've of course seen in the previous trailer. She's showing up on the vineyard saying, please sir, someone's after me, seeking Picard's protection. Then the trailer takes us to San Francisco, to Starfleet headquarters. Now this shot here I thought actually had just been lifted from Star Trek Discovery. At the end of Discovery Season 2, we get a very similar shot of the Golden Gate Bridge and the city of San Francisco. Uh, but this is actually a different shot. This is uh, the, the skyline and, and some details are actually different from what we saw in Discovery. So this is a new shot. Picard is approaching the Anaheim Convention Center. Oh, um, excuse me, I'm sorry, uh, Starfleet headquarters. And as he's making his way to the uh, check-in desk, we get this overhead shot, which features a CGI virtual model of the Enterprise D. And if you do look closely, you can see the registry just to the rear of the main shuttle bay. It says 1701D. So this is the USS Enterprise D. Uh, looking almost exactly like it did in Star Trek The Next Generation. So this was a really cool visual here. And then, of course, we get Picard at the check-in desk, giving his name and having to spell it out for the ensign. And this might be the clearest look we get at one of the com badges, and it seems to be very similar to the All Good Things badge 
but may still be slightly different. So I'm really excited to get like a really close look at this so that we can examine what this com badge looks like. But it does look to be at least uh, similar to the All Good Things version. He hands Picard a visitor badge, which Picard puts on as the ensign says, it's nice to see you up and around again, sir, which definitely earns this look of annoyance or ire from Picard. So this shot, the second part of this shot anyway, was seen in a previous trailer and I was really curious what was going on here. It looks almost like an archive of some sort with little uh, robotic drones uh, kind of moving things around in here. I'm, I'm thinking this could be like a digital storage archive or library or something. That's just a total guess on my part. I'm not sure. But this is shown as we transition to this admiral's office where Picard is asking her for help. Picard says, we have an obligation to investigate. And the admiral says, there is no we, Jean-Luc. Now, before we actually see this office, we do get this other shot, which is really fascinating. It seems to be some sort of closet or storage unit filled with what look to be androids. Similar to a Soong type android, but not modeled on Brent Spiner. But it's got that same light colored skin that Data and Lore and B4 had. And continuing with what was described as Dr. Soong's penchant for whimsical names, this one is stamped F8 on the forehead, which of course you could say is fate, right? So uh, not sure what these represent, if these are new creations or if they are other prototypes created by Dr. Sung. As we know, I think in a TNG episode, they mentioned that there were nine prototypes before lore. Uh, so who knows? But uh, my money is on that these are new androids. And then later on, we meet a character played by Alison Pill, who's a cyberneticist. So I'm thinking she has something to do with these creations. Following that is another shot of that facility where people are being held that we saw a lot more of in the first trailer. And I think this is that same facility where it had that sign that there have been no assimilations in the last however many days uh, that seems to be being controlled by the Romulans. And in a typical powerful Picard line, Picard says, Admiral, I am standing up for the Federation for what it should still represent. And he's very much raising his voice to this admiral in her office. She says to him, this is no longer your house, Jean-Luc. Go home. Now in this next shot, we get Picard, I'm assuming, leaving the office, still wearing that visitor's badge, kind of dejected and also determined. Now what's interesting is outside the window, we see a shuttlecraft go by and it looks to be the same model of shuttlecraft that's in Star Trek Discovery, which uh, I have to say is a little bit disappointing. I'm hoping there uh, that this may be a temporary piece of uh, visual effects for the trailer and that might be replaced by something, a different model of some kind, because it doesn't make sense that they would use the same model of shuttlecraft. This is, you know, the nerd me kind of getting into this, but, you know, I, again, I'm hoping this is just a temporary visual effects piece and this isn't the final version that we'll see in the show because I, I don't like the idea of them just reusing old models. Now, the idea of reusing old ships in this will come in later in the trailer, but I think in that case, that's a very specific reason. What that is, I'm not sure yet, but I'm definitely uh, excited to find out. This is similar to a shot that we got in a previous trailer as well. Now, if you look inside the windows, it looks like people are reacting to a news story about Picard of some sort. But walking along this rainy street is, of course, Dodge uh, in, in, like I said, a shot that we've seen in another trailer before as well. It looks as though there have been more visual effects elements added to this. We see a cityscape in the background, which uh, I, I haven't gone back to consult that earlier trailer in the middle of this, but I don't think that was there before. So we're seeing an evolution of the visual effects in the shots, I think. Picard's voiceover continues. He says, I have to help her. We then join a conversation that he's having with another gentleman. And I'm not sure who this is. I know in TNG episode family had a childhood friend named Lewis. Uh, this could possibly be him, but I, I, I think it might be someone else. Uh, either way, this is someone we've not seen in a previous trailer. And this man says to Picard, you really want to go back out into the cold? And then we see Picard in kind of a twilight time in the vineyard. 
uh, slapping a badge to his chest, which we see is a Starfleet comm badge, probably the one that he had at his retirement. It's similar to the ones that we see in the TNG movie era. And Picard replies, more than ever. Next, we get a screen confirming when the release date for Picard is, and it's earlier than I personally expected. We will see the first episode of Picard on January 23rd. So mark your calendars, ladies and gents. We will uh, definitely be celebrating that day in the fandom with the return of Jean-Luc Picard. Next, we get a an overhead shot of a location that's very familiar to Star Trek fans, the Vasquez Rocks in California, where a number of scenes were obviously filmed for this series. Picard is talking to Michelle Hurd's character, who he apparently meets in this location. He says, I have a plan. And she replies, another top secret unauthorized rescue mission, to which Picard seems to scoff a little bit. Uh, next, we get this really interesting beachfront location with kind of a, a facility of some sort floating uh, offshore above uh, above ground with another one further in the background as well and this kind of futuristic looking uh, facility or cityscape not sure exactly where this is I'm assuming it's meant to be somewhere on earth um, if it is related to the scene that we get next it could be a cybernetics facility of some kind as we will see Allison Pill's character who we've been told is a cyberneticist she says to Picard this is everything that has ever mattered to me and then in another location uh, she says to him I'm going with you another shot of kind of a desert locale and this could be on earth this could be an alien planet of some kind uh, we see rock formations and in the background, a city with, you know, scaffolding and cranes and that sort of thing. We hear Patrick Stewart voicing over, I need your skill and your courage. And we see Evan Evagora as Elnor, a Romulan who is described as fiercely loyal to Picard and a martial arts expert. Immediately after that, we see Santiago Cabrera as Chris Rios, who is the pilot of the ship that Picard takes in this series and is described as a skilled thief. And he seems to be uh, have a cigar in this shot here. We get a closer shot of that Borg ship that we initially saw in the last trailer with kind of, it looks to be, as we get closer here, it definitely seems to be some large damaged sections that are kind of walled off by a force field of some kind. Followed by this shot of what looks to be a lab containing Borg bodies that are being um, experimented on or worked on. If you look in the background, there's a man or, or somebody on the floor. It looks like this was a scene of violence of some kind. Following that is our first glimpse of Seven of Nine in this trailer as she's uh, emotionally holding someone uh, who has uh, either died or been severely injured. Not sure who this is from behind, but obviously means a great deal to Seven of Nine. Uh, maybe possibly that body that we saw on the floor in the previous shot, but nothing really to link it to that other than uh, the fact that they're next to each other in a trailer, which as heavily as these are edited may not mean a thing. <laughs> After that is another shot of Michelle Hurd's character looking very emotional. Michelle Hurd, I should say, is playing a character named Rafi Musiker, who is described as a former intelligence officer struggling with substance abuse. Uh, now, I've personally not seen Michelle Hurd in other productions, but I've heard from other people that she's very, very good in uh, some of the other things she's been in. So uh, this is someone I'm really interested in learning more about. It looks like she's been given a lot of interesting material to work with. So uh, I'm really curious to see how that all plays out. Following that is a shot of what I'm assuming is the hero ship of the show, the ship that Picard and his assembled crew are going to be on, approaching a planet which maybe Earth. I'm having a little trouble kind of discerning the land masses and, and making them kind of uh, fit earth land masses i could be just looking at it slightly wrong somebody in the comments might be able to help me out here is this earth or another planet i'm not certain on this one yet but this is our first glimpse of this ship which we'll see a little bit more of in the trailer as well another shot of santiago cabrera's character in the captain's seat of what i'm assuming is that same ship as well um interesting design on the bridge very uh linear there's there's kind of a lot of depth that goes back quite a ways 
definitely not the traditional Starfleet type bridge that we're used to. Over these past few shots, there is a voiceover by Picard as he says, the past is written, but we are left to write the future. As it's revealed that he's saying this to, I'm not sure who uh, he's speaking to in this scene, but uh, interesting line and I like it. It seems like he's encouraging someone to take action to change some circumstances, uh, mistakes that have been made in the past. But while those can't be changed, it's up to us to go forward from here and make a difference. And again, Santiago Cabrera's character in command says, hold on. We see a hand operating a control with some kind of virtual aspects to it as this ship, which uh, has apparently been named uh, thanks to an actor on social media, uh, it jumps to warp. A title screen comes up that says a legend. And we, of course, see the former Captain Picard in all his glory here uh, with that background, which puts him on that ship, I think, from based on other shots we've seen of him in other trailers. Next is a really interesting shot. And this one has raised a lot of questions for me. We see uh, the the ship, the main hero ship, and it's firing on what appears to be a 23rd century Romulan bird of prey, similar to the one that you would see in the original series episode Balance of Terror. Now, uh, it's it's similar. It's not exactly the same. Of course, it's a little bit more detailed than that model originally was. But I'm really curious what the story behind this ship being here is. Um, there's a number of theories out there. I don't think it has anything to do with time travel. I don't think that's going to come into play. But we do know that this series takes place after the loss of the Romulan homeworld, thanks to the supernova that we saw in the flashback scenes in Star Trek 2009. So it may be that the Romulan fleet is in such bad shape and they've lost so many ships that they have to resort to using older starships such as this class of ship from a century earlier. So uh, that's kind of the best theory that I've seen so far. Uh, but I have to say it's really cool to see this design being used in this trailer and I'm really excited to see some of these old designs like this get some screen time in Picard. It, it just th this shot looks incredible. Next we get a title card completing the phrase from before a legend never leaves the fight and the next shot is really cool. We get Picard facing off what looks to be a Romulan. It's kind of hard to tell, but I think he does have pointed ears. And of course, Picard's in his fencing pose with a large sword. We do know that Picard is an expert fencer based on uh, some of the stuff from TNG during the series. So it's kind of cool that even though he's quite a bit older, he does get a little bit of action-y stuff to play around with. I bet that was a lot of fun for Patrick Stewart. Then this shot of an unknown soldier in a helmet of some kind smashing glass um, I'm wondering this is all just speculation on my part is this some sort of sinister agent breaking into Picard's home we saw in a previous trailer that he's behind his desk pulling out a weapon to stun someone this could be from that same scene some sort of attack on his family house we get a shot aboard that ship again with the captain Santiago Cabrera's character giving a high five to Alison Pill's character, who I should say is named Dr. Agnes Gerati. And as I said before, she's a cyberneticist. Uh, there's not a lot of information about her character out there besides that. So I really enjoyed this actor on the newsroom. So I'm very excited to see uh, what she does in Picard. Another shot of that Borg ship. This is the same shot that we got in the previous trailer and we see the the Borg cube in its entirety. It's a massive vessel and a great deal of damage to it with those sections walled off by force fields as I said before. We get another shot of the character Dodge played by Issa Briones. Now we don't know a lot about this character as it seems that much of the mystery of the at least the first few episodes of this series will center around her identity and what she represents. So it makes sense that they're kind of keeping that information very guarded. We don't know a lot about her. And in fact, in this trailer, we hear a character uh, talking about, you know, wanting to learn about what she is and what she knows. A Romulan woman is speaking. She says she was sent for a reason. And she says this to a character that I'm thinking must be Narek, who's played by Harry Treadaway. 
He's described as a Romulan refugee who joins Picard's crew in investigating what his people are doing to former Borg drones. So um, I'm thinking that this Dodge character has something to do with the Borg. Uh, maybe she's a former Borg drone herself, as many people have speculated. And that's why he's interested in finding out more about this character. He says back to her, I'll get the information we need. And we see him in an intimate moment with Dodge. So it looks like maybe he's using the Jim Kirk method of trying to find out information uh, from a woman. So, uh, or, or again, this could be just how this trailer is edited to make us believe certain things. It's really hard to tell some things, but it looks like there's going to be some kind of relationship between these two characters. And it seems that he is uh, having some hidden motives from her in, you know, trying to find out what she's all about. We get a hero shot of Elnor, the uh, Romulan who's played by Evan Evagora. Now, this is one of his first roles. So he's, uh, I, I don't know a lot about him as an actor from anything else because he's had very few roles besides this, very much a newcomer. Uh, a lot of people, of course, calling him the Romulan Legolas. So <laughs> definitely interested to learn more about this character as well. Which you could say about any character in this, really. A quick location shot here. I'm not sure what... It's, it's a very quick shot, um, kind of under the shoulder, looking at the uh, horizon where there seems to be a figure standing there. It could be an Andorian with a couple of antennas sticking up. But this shot is so quick and there's not really much to glean from it. Not sure what's happening here. Next, we get our first look at Jonathan Del Arco as Hugh since we last saw him in the TNG episode Descent Part 2. It looks as though he's been very much deborgified, kind of in the same way that Seven has, uh, retaining a few of those scars of his uh, time as a Borg, but he's got a full head of hair, and uh, it, it's kind of cool to see him looking much different than we saw him in TNG. I think one of the most fascinating aspects of this show is that we are getting uh, the return of this character in particular, which, you know, I never thought we'd see a continuation of Hugh's story, but with how he would relate to Seven of Nine and Picard as former Borg, um, it could be a really fascinating part of the story that I'm really looking forward to. We get a Seven of Nine voiceover and she says, I help people who have no one else to help them, as she says this to Picard, followed by a shot of her being pretty badass with a couple of... Uh, uh, you know, handling dual guns here and, and looking pretty fierce. So it seems that Seven has kind of taken on this role of, uh, you know, fighting for people other, th other than herself, which is, uh, you know, an interesting continuation of this character. And I'm, I'm really excited to see how she has changed in the two decades since the end of Voyager, the last time we saw her. And from there, we go on to my favorite part of the trailer. We see a person preparing dinner, uh, at, you know, in his kitchen and we hear a voice yell, dad, and he yells, what? And she yells, come here. And he yells, stop yelling. And by now, of course, we know that this is Jonathan Frakes as Will Riker. And the daughter yells back, it's Jean-Luc Picard. And Will turns shocked to face Jean-Luc Picard, who says, hello, Will. And it's just this great touching reunion with this look of absolute shock on Riker's face. Now, as I mentioned in a previous video, I think uh, some internet sleuths out there kind of deduced that Riker and Troy had a daughter based on the fact that there's a character named Kestra who's credited on IMDb. Now, Kestra, of course, was the name of Deanna Troy's sister who died at a very young age in an accident. So it makes sense that Riker and Troy would name a daughter in honor of Kestra Troy. So... Uh, kind of cool, you know, paying attention to some of the deep lore of Star Trek. Then we very quickly see another reunion, this one between Picard and Deanna Troy. She says, hello, Jean-Luc, and they give each other a very uh, tender hug. <laughs> and then, of course, the obligatory quick montage of shots. Again, we get uh, the fight between the ship that Picard's on and this old style Romulan bird of prey. What appears to be uh, maybe a soccer ball that someone's kind of doing some fancy footwork around. I'm wondering if this has something to do with some of the martial arts training uh, that Elnor does with Picard or something like that. I'm not sure what's going on, but 
Uh, it looks to be like uh, some sort of soccer maneuver or something, which seemed a little out of place. And then this shot from above, a number of people surrounding this circular thing, which kind of gives off this pulse of energy or something. Uh, totally without any context. I have no idea what this is. Uh, this is just, yeah, no idea. If anyone has any clue, please leave a comment below. I, I don't know what this could be. I think it's in here just because it looks kind of futury or something. Then we get our next look at Hugh as he's running down a corridor with some sort of flashlight along with Jean-Luc Picard and Dodge. Uh, this might be through the Romulan facility or something like that, or, or on that Borg ship. Not totally sure, but uh, I, again, I'm just going to reiterate how cool it is to see Jonathan Del Arco reprising this role. We see uh, a hand, this, this may be Dodge, I'm not sure, it looks like a young person, assembling some sort of puzzle or, or something. Not sure what this is exactly. Again, very much no context here at all. Meanwhile, Picard's voiceover says, We all have a story, just waiting to be claimed. The next shot is Alison Pill and I think Santiago Cabrera's character, uh, kind of face to face, maybe an intimate moment of some kind here. And then a shot of those ships again, I think from that flashback early on, they look to be the same style of ship that Picard was remembering or seeing during that dream sequence with Data attacking some sort of uh, spacecraft or orbital installation. Another shot of Seven of Nine looking very angsty. And then this young girl looking out a uh, window during a storm. So again, you know, very quick, very quick shots with no clear relation to one another, just kind of uh, showing the mood of the series. So yeah, not a lot to glean here without the context. Michelle Hurd's character, Raffi, seems to be preparing a, a gun of some kind, a phaser arming herself. And then this shot that I'm really curious about, this appears to be Dodge, Isa Briona's character, and in some kind of agony as her skin looks to be blistering or, or burning. I'm really not sure what this is about. If uh, she's maybe an artificial construct being destroyed or, or something, but it looks very painful and it looks to be in that same setting that we saw in the other trailer where she was fighting off a couple of security officers or soldiers. The shot where she's kicking them over the railings and they're, they're beaming away. This looks to be from that same set piece, so not sure what it means, but it looks like that might be on Earth or in and around Starfleet, possibly, uh, but that's all just a guess as well. We get a brief shot of Picard in some sort of celebration behind his desk. Uh, he's figured something out or discovered something uh, that he's very pleased about. And again, another shot of that ship that they're all on under attack by this old style Romulan bird of prey. Again, I'm just really curious why it's this old bird of prey, which I, I'm very happy to see in here, but uh, I'm really curious. I, January 23rd cannot come fast enough. I really want an answer to all these questions. I don't know. Can you tell I'm kind of giddy? Uh, man, yeah, very excited for this. And then finally, the trailer closes out on this scene that actually made me a little misty, brought a bit of a tear to my eye. Picard is sitting with Riker and he says, thank you for not trying to talk me out of all of this. To which Riker laughs and says, believe me, I know better. And he, of course, has his arm around Picard and Picard kind of reaches up and pats Riker's hand. Now, this relationship between the two of them just really warms my heart and makes me happy because you can tell in TNG they're, they're genuine close friends, but there is, of course, that hierarchy there. Uh, Picard is Riker's commanding officer, and there can't be, you know, that closeness that we see here. And just to see them expressing that friendship and, and it just really makes me smile and brings a really warm feeling to my heart. So... Uh, I'm very excited for this show. So happy to see some of these faces back. And, you know, knowing that Star Trek Picard brought Patrick Stewart back because of the strength of the story that they're trying to tell makes me really curious what that story is. We know it'll have some sort of resonance to today's 
uh, political landscape and, and what the world is going through because that's what Star Trek does and that's what Patrick Stewart has said he finds so important about this. So I'm so excited for all the aspects of this, you know, just the, the reunion, getting back together with the old gang, but also what it'll mean for the Star Trek universe as a whole going forward and the quality of storytelling that hopefully we will get with this, which I'm confident we will. Um, I will, of course, reserve judgment until I've seen it, but I'm very optimistic based on what we've seen so far. So yeah, very, very excited. And we, of course, close out on the title screen with the January 23rd, 2020 date at the bottom. I, it seems so soon, but still so far away as well. So boy, uh, join me on this channel as we get closer to that date. I'm sure we'll be learning more in drips and drabs as we get closer. And of course, reviewing those episodes as they come out. So there you have it. I'm pretty sure my excitement uh, came through pretty loud and clear with regards to that trailer. But I'm curious what you all thought of this. Let me know in the comments below and uh, I will definitely, of course, read all of your comments. Uh, some of the questions I have from the trailer, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts and opinions on that. Uh, let me know. Thank you, of course, to the Patreon supporters for your help in bringing these videos to you. I really do appreciate it. And thanks everyone else for liking, sharing, subscribing and watching. And uh, that sharing thing, you know, if, if you think of someone who likes a little bit more positivity in their Star Trek YouTube, share this video with them and, and you know, Maybe they'll like it, maybe they won't, but uh, I always like expanding the audience with like-minded people who have a positive attitude towards new Star Trek stuff, uh, like I do. So let them know uh, about this channel. I know I see a lot out there that's like, oh, everyone on YouTube is so negative. Well, not everyone, so uh, hopefully I can change that perception a little bit. Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video, which will be a breakdown of the Star Trek Discovery Season 3 trailer. I'll see you then. Until then, live long and prosper.